The world of cloud computing can seem so complex at times, with so many key terms and phrases that you don't even know where to start. But here at Microsoft Dev Radio, we're gonna give you a key terminology cheat sheet in order to help you anytime that you're taking an exam or maybe just need a refresher on something that someone's talking about. Hey, I'm Omar, welcome to the channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that like button to see more content just like this. And while you're down there, go ahead and click the link in the description, which will take you to Microsoft's Engagement Hub. There you can sign up to be a part of our robust community to get code tutorials, other videos with tips and tricks and just be engaged with more developers just like you. Now to become a developer, you don't need to put these things to memory. That just seems silly. Any good developer is gonna know when to lean on their resources and go back and look at things that they might not know off the top of their head. But being familiarized with any of these terms can help you take any exam and go on to pass said exam because you've seen that word before. You've seen that terminology and you know where to look back in your documentation in order to find the answer that you're looking for. So to kick it off alphabetically, we're gonna start with the word advisor. Now, an advisor is a free service that helps users optimize their Azure resources by providing recommendations for improving the performance, security, and cost effectiveness of their Azure deployments. You can go into Azure and configure Advisor to target different resource groups or different things that you're putting your money towards so you can get the best optimization out of it. Next up is auto scaling. Auto scaling automates the process of adding or removing compute resources based on traffic demands for your application. If the business is up, it's gonna auto scale up. If the business is down, it's gonna auto scale down. So you're not overspending in areas that you don't need to be. Next up is availability set. A set of virtual machines that are managed together to increase availability and reliability during maintenance events, leaving at least one machine available. Next up are availability zones. An availability zone is a physically separate location within an Azure region that provides redundant power, networking, and cooling, and is designed to be highly resilient to potential failures. There are three availability zones per Azure region. Next up is Azure Active Directory, or Azure AD. Now this is Azure's identity and access management service, allowing users to securely manage access to applications, services, and resources. This is where you go to assign who can do what. Next up, we have Azure Resource Manager or known as ARM. This is the service that allows users to deploy, manage, and monitor their Azure resources in a consistent and predictable way. Next, we have our first type of storage, blob storage. Now, blob storage is scalable and cost-effective object storage service for storing large amounts of unstructured data, such as documents, images, and audio and video as well. Even structured data in the form of text or binary files goes in blob storage. CLI stands for the command line interface, and that's for managing Azure resources from Windows, Mac OS, and Linux environments. Now this one's very important. Cognitive services are a collection of artificial intelligence services and APIs that allow developers to add intelligent features such as computer vision and speech recognitions to their applications. Now, Azure's got some great things coming up in the AI space, so this is one that you're going to want to look into later on down the line. CDN, or Content Delivery Network, are a network of servers that let you deliver content to users all over the world more quickly through storing content at strategic endpoints. This way, it doesn't take so long for somebody to access something that they're trying to access. Cost management is a suite of tools that help organizations monitor, allocate, and optimize their cost of their cloud workloads. After all, cloud is definitely supposed to be more cost efficient for its users. So we definitely need to get into a cost management platform so we can understand what's being spent, why, and where. DDoS protection is a service that protects your resources from distributed denial of service DDoS attacks through automatic detection and mitigation. Disk storage, another type of storage, is durable and highly available storage for Azure virtual machines. Elasticity is a word that you're gonna hear a lot, but that just simply means the ability of a system to increase and decrease in size. Event Grid. An Event Grid is a fully managed event routing service that enables you to create rules, automatically send messages to other Azure services. Fault tolerance. Now, this is very important because in the case of a disaster, we're gonna need something like fault tolerance. Fault tolerance just means a property that enables a system to continue operating properly in the event of a failure of one or more components. A firewall is a common term, but it's also used in the cloud space. A firewall is a type of software that either allows or blocks certain kinds of internet traffic to pass through it. Functions. Functions are serverless compute service that enables you to run a small piece of code called functions in response to events or on demand. 
Security is very important in Microsoft Azure, and that's why we have what's called a Key Vault. Now, a Key Vault is a service that allows you to securely store and manage keys, passwords, and certificates that are used by your applications. A load balancer distributes incoming traffic to virtual machines within a load balancer set. Machine Learning and Machine Learning Studio. Machine Learning is a service that enables you to build, deploy, and manage machine learning models at scale. And in the Machine Learning Studio, there are web-based tools that provides a visual interface for building, training, and deploying machine learning models. Microsoft Azure offers a marketplace, and the marketplace is an online store that provides a range of applications, tools, and services that are designed to work with Azure. Whatever your needs are, whatever you're thinking to build or grow, Microsoft Azure has it in its marketplace. The pricing calculator. The pricing calculator allows you to estimate the cost for your Azure products and services. This way you can stay within your company's budget if you are looking to expand your company. Now we talked about availability zones, but now we have to talk about the regions. An Azure region is a separate geographic area that is made up of one or more data centers isolated from other regions to reduce the impact of outages. Microsoft Azure offers over 60 plus regions, which is more than any cloud computing platform out there. Some of the regions are on the east coast of the US, the central United States, Japan, India, Norway, Germany, other European countries. There are literally Microsoft Azure regions everywhere across the world. Role-based access controls is the idea of assigning and restricting permissions based on a user's role in an organization. Remember, Microsoft Azure is very big in the security space. The Department of Defense has chosen Microsoft Azure to be its cloud provider. So we take security very seriously over here. So we wanna make sure that we're giving people the options to give roles and what people can and can't do in their organizations. A virtual machine. A virtual machine, or sometimes known as a VM, is a software emulation of a physical computer that runs an operating system and is available in a variety of sizes. An Azure Virtual Machine gives you the flexibility of virtualization without having to buy and maintain the physical hardware to run it. However, you still need to maintain the virtual machine by performing tasks such as configuring, patching, and installing software that runs on it. And last but not least, Virtual Private Network or VPN Gateway. This is what you need to establish connections between your virtual networks and between them and on-premise networks. Now, these are just some of the basics of cloud computing. There are many more words that we could go into depth and discover, but honestly, we'd be here all day long. And that's the beauty of cloud computing. It's a vastly growing industry where new things arise every single day. If you stay subscribed to us and click the link in the description to join Microsoft's Engagement Hub, you can be brought up to speed and become a part of the vast community of the ever-growing Microsoft Azure network. If you like this video, share it with somebody who also is trying to get into the cloud computing space and hit the notification bell to be notified when other videos come out. Thank you.